Yes, uh, so I'm going to give a talk about building a product with Opti. So actually using um, Opti to build a product which you can deploy to production and be reasonably sure that nobody's going to leak your secrets you um, deployed into the product in the end. So a bit about me. My name is uh, Ruven Zawinski. I work, I work for Pengotronics uh, EK. We do a lot of uh, embedded software consulting. So we do things, uh, things like board support packages, and we often work on embedded ARM platforms. Um, you can find me on GitHub with the name Emantor, and you can also contact me by email at this email address. And at Pengotronics, I do a lot of work um, with Opti. Uh, I do a bit of system integration, so integrating Opti into the board support package, which will eventually be used in the field. And I also do uh, a bit of testing, because I wrote a testing framework like three years ago, which we still use today to test uh, platforms uh, when we eventually want to do updates on the platforms. Um, let's get a short overview. So I'm going to start with a bit of introduction, a short introduction to the, into the trust zone and Opti. Then I'm going to present a motivation for this talk. Then I'm going to show you the problems you run into when you're trying to use Opti in a product. Um, I'm going to present the solutions so far for the platform I'm working on, but uh, which uh, should also be applicable to the platforms you may be working with. Um, I'm going to come to a conclusion, and then there's going to be the happy outlook where I wish for things which are not implemented yet. Um, so let's start with the trust zone. So trust zone in 32 bits divides our processor state into a normal world and a secure world, and then there's uh, some kind of secure monitor which allows us to switch between the different worlds. So um, the usual CPUs come up in the secure world, then the bootloader starts up in the secure world, I deploy my trusted operating system, and the trusted operating system ensures that when it switches over to the normal world, my bootloader can continue to run. And uh, every time I want, to, uh, want to access some kind of trust zone data, or I want to call into my trusted operating system, I do this uh, SMC called Secure Monitor Call, which goes into se the Secure Monitor. The Secure Monitor then does all the sanitization between the normal and the secure world, so ensuring no re register contents are leaked and everything is sanitized, uh, and then goes into the secure world. The secure world does some kind of computation. My trusted operating system runs my trusted application, which runs in the field, which also may compute some secrets, may request some pin entry from a, from a secure de device, whatever, and then returns the data back to the normal world. Um, the trusted operating system we are employing in the field is called Opti, which is the Open Portable Trusted Execution Environment. And it's an open source uh, implementation of the global platform T specifications, which use the trust zone. Global platform is a standards body which also uh, standardized uh, smart card interfaces. So um, the idea is that you have a standard interface for your trusted applications, and then it doesn't matter which trusted operating system in the end you're going to use. Um, Opti also has support for various ARM platforms. So there's uh, some support for STM32. TI platforms are supported. Layerscape platforms from NXP are supported. And Broadcom platforms, for example, for simple development use cases, you can also use Raspberry Pis. So there's support for Raspberry Pi 3 to develop on Opti there. Um, and my focus is especially on IMX6 32-bit uh, platforms, or specifically on IMX6 UL platforms. So the motivation for the talk is that we want to secure Opti and the uh, trusted applications running within Opti uh, for production use. So we, are, we want to be reasonably sure that we are not leaking our data in production anywhere. And uh, we want to ensure that upstream Opti can be used to, uh, securely on IMX6. So all the changes I need to do to Opti are not going to live downstream somewhere. So uh, they are going to go upstream into the project. So we don't have to maintain that and cannot, uh, do in con uh, can do that in conjunction with the upstream Opti maintainers. Um, and uh, I also want to provide some guidance which parts may be missing for other platforms because I'm specifically looking at IMX6 platforms. I don't know um, how to implement certain parts for TI or STM platforms and how to, serve, uh, to solve certain problems there. But I can show you the problems and uh, maybe you can, kinda, uh, come, uh, you can come up with a solution to the problem. Um, so 
the problems are. Which components do I need to secure Opti? So which are the parts which need to be implemented by the platform rather by, uh, than by the Opti core to uh, secure the Opti in production? And which part of this con configuration is already done upstream? So what's the part that I don't need to worry about? Which part has already, uh, already been done by the upstream maintainers or maybe by the uh, SOC manufacturer who upstreamed his changes uh, to uh, upstream Opti? And then again, the next question is, which part of this uh, needs to be man managed by the system integrator? So which part needs to be managed by the person who in the end is going to assemble the whole system, including the kernel, including the bootloader, and including the trusted operating system? So securing upstream opti, uh, opti from my point of view, consists of the following uh, five or optionally uh, six points. You need to uh, employ some kind of RAM protection or you need to employ the Opti pager. You need a hardware unique key for your platform. You need uh, to seed the Opti uh, pseudo random number generator with a sufficiently random seed. Uh, you need some kind of peripheral access configuration depending on your platform. And you have to ensure that uh, you have a trusted boot up of your Opti operating system. So you need to ensure that uh, only the Opti's you compiled can boot on the platform because otherwise uh, somebody could run other Opti's and thus leak your secrets on the platform. And you optionally want to employ uh, some kind of storage rollback protection to ensure that nobody can uh, um, fool you with uh, old data from a previous installation. So let's start with uh, RAM protection. So uh, the one thing you can do for RAM protection is uh, employ some kind of DDR firewall. Um, and this protects part of my uh, RAM from access by the normal world. So an example of this is the Trust Zone Controller 380 hardware, which supports the configuration of multiple regions. So you can say, I'd like to be 32 megabytes at the very end of RAM to be allocated to the secure world, and the normal world can no longer access the memory there. Every time the normal world will try to access this memory, it will generate uh, an interrupt to uh, notify you that somebody tried to access the secure memory from the normal world, and you will also read only zeros from the normal world. And uh, for IMX6 platforms, there's uh, this trust zone address space controller from, uh, from ARM used inside the platform. So many SOCs may use different DDR firewalls. There are also uh, custom implementations from different vendors. I know that, for example, the high key platforms use a custom DDR firewall, which is uh, uh, not very well documented as far as I know, or the uh, documentation is hard to get to. But for these uh, ARM standard implementations, you can just download the data sheet from ARM. And uh, the upstream, uh, there's already an upstream driver for these trust zone controllers inside of Opti. And you had to previously um, you had to previously describe the regions and all the stuff yourself, but this is no longer necessary because uh, depending on your platform configuration for IMX6 platforms at least, there's uh, auto configuration. So with an Opti, we already know the total memory size. We already know how much memory we want in the secure world, and we can just calculate how the region configuration inside this trust zone controller should look like, and then we can just apply the trust zone controller uh, configuration and uh, be happy that nobody can access this. Um, it's also important to uh, remember that there may be some kind of bypass for this trust zone controller. For IMX6 platforms, as an example, there's a single bit in the IO MUX uh, which you need to set to disable the bypass of the trust zone controller because you have a certain uh, bandwidth, uh, so, so there's a small reduction of bandwidth going through the DDR firewall. And you have to disable this, obviously, because otherwise you can uh, just bypass the firewall and everybody can read your secure word memory, which is uh, rather bad. Um, so next up, uh, an alternative to using this RAM protection or configuring the DDR firewall is employing uh, the Opti pager, where you run uh, a small part of your Opti inside the SRAM on your CPU, and then you encrypt all the other memory pages you want to store into, uh, you want to store into a normal memory. Um, you still want to ensure that nobody can overwrite the memory in the end, but um, uh, even if they can read the memory, the memory is still going to be encrypted and authenticated. 
um, which uh, does not necessarily require the DR firewall. There are some constraints with this. Your device needs to have a sufficient amount of SRAM, so 128 kilobytes to uh, 200, uh, 256 kilobytes. And uh, for us, the chosen IMX6 UL does not necessarily have enough SRAM, depending on the version of the processor you select. And also for bigger variants, which may have enough SRAM, there's constraints on other devices maybe requiring the SRAM. So even for this iMix 6 UL, there's a pixel coprocessor you can use to um, do simple frame buffer stuff or uh, simple 2D graphics on an external display. And this requires uh, 128 times 32 bits of SRAM to store the frame buffers for your pixel pipeline. So if you connect the display, your SRAM is going to be smaller. And for bigger IMX6 variants, there's uh, the image processing unit or the GPU, which also may require SRAM to store data because uh, DDR memory may be too slow for this. So this was why we didn't choose the OptiPager as the way to go there and instead use uh, the DDR firewall. So next up is this hardware unique key. Um, Opti requires some kind of hardware unique key, um, which is used to derive all the other keys on boot up. And this should be uh, unique per device, um, which means that every device should have a unique key. And uh, subsequently, um, uh, once uh, a device stores data, it can only be encrypted by the very same, uh, decrypted by the very same processor. And obviously should not be accessible from the normal world because otherwise people can just derive the key in the normal world and then uh, de uh, decrypt the data. Um, for IMX6, we actually use um, a trick with the cryptographics acceleration and authentication module. There's something called the master key verification blob where you can say, I want to do a hash over the master key, which is unique per device. And then we use this hash as the hardware unique key. And additionally, in the CALM, there's a bit where you can lock out this uh, generation or where you can increment a counter. And the next one who does this master key verification blob is going to get a different hash. And you are never going to get the same hash again unless you reboot the platform and then the bit is unset again. And uh, this is uh, still not in upstream opti. The pull request at the moment is uh, closed because this uh, needs to be rebased on the IMX6-7 CALM driver. So NXP actually contributed uh, a driver for the CALM. The CALM does more than this master key verification, Bob. You can also do um, AES uh, encryption and decryption in hardware. So a lot of crypto acceleration is possible, uh, possible there. It, do, it also does hash algorithms. And uh, I'm currently in the process of rebasing this on the CALM driver. And uh, then uh, we should have hardware unique key derivation for Opti platforms uh, or for IMX6 platforms. So this will be done soon. Um, then get uh, the next one is RNG seeding. So Opti internally, if you use a software RNG, you can also use a hardware RNG. But due to constraints on our platforms, we don't want to use the hardware uh, RNG. Uh, you still require some kind of RNG seed. And the default seed for a development environment is always zero, so it's kind of well predictable. That's not necessarily what you want for a, um, for a product. Um, so for IMX6, we have a RNG or a true random number generator again inside this CALM block, and we can uh, read out uh, a seed for our pseudo random number generator at the very beginning of boot, and then uh, just seed uh, the RNG with this. And this is not implemented yet. It's up on my schedule. I'll get to it at some point and then we should have uh, good RNG seeding uh, at the start of Opti. I know currently if you start Opti on IMX6 platform, it's also going to complain with a loud warning saying uh, seeding RNG with, uh, with zeros exclamation mark. So uh, eventually I'd like to get rid of this and do uh, real RNG seeding. Um, so there's also the problem of peripheral access configuration. So SOCs have DMA masters usually besides the CPU and the DDR firewall only protects you from accesses which are marked as normal. So if they are marked as a secure world access, your, um, your DDR firewall is just going to let the access through. And uh, depending on how your platform works, those masters may actually be uh, default secure. 
So in the end, I configure my DDR firewall correct. I configure my bypass correct. So my CPU normal world process can't access my secure memory, which is great. But then I ask the GPU, hey, give me a DMA transfer from my secure memory. And the, D uh, and the GPU says, happily, here's your DMA transfer. What else do you want? So you need to ensure that uh, all masters are uh, configured as non-secure. And this is highly dependent on your platform. So read your reference manual and ensure that these access policies are configured correctly. For IMX6, there's a, a, a unit inside the processor which is called the Central Security Unit, CSU. There's a, a register inside of it where you can just say whether this DMA master is secure or non-secure. And uh, for this, we just configure everything as non-secure except for the CPU, obviously and then uh, everything is safe. If you want to do some kind of uh, um, peripheral access from Opti, however, then it gets more interesting. So um, if you want to do some kind of DMA UART in the secure world, you may have to come up with some kind of API which is able to um, handle this case. We just configure everything default uh, non-secure inside the IMX6 UL. And it's uh, rather trivial to configure this register for other platforms. You just have to look inside the security reference manual and then find out which peripherals are actually on your specific SOC and then submit this. Um, should be really, really easy. Um, and then next is trusted boot up. So you, use, you have to use your platform's version of verified or secure boot because otherwise anybody could start other Opti versions on your board and then just leak your secrets if uh, this is not verified. And this verifies the Opti version to prevent replacements. So you, for uh, IMX6 platforms, there's a high assurance boot uh, implemented uh, by the SOC vendor and inside the boot ROM. So the boot ROM verifies our bootloader. The bootloader, in turn, contains a binary version of Opti. So the bootloader is verified, the Opti is verified, and the very first thing the bootloader starts on startup is Opti. So there's no real or we try to minimize the attack vector in this, uh, in this case. And this is not something you can implement in upstream Opti. This is something you need to ensure on the integration level. So inside uh, your, uh, or the system, this is something the system integrator has to do when he's designing the platform. So not only does he need to compile the kernel, compile the bootloader, compile the Opti, and uh, bundle it all into a fine bundle, he also needs to uh, enable high assurance boot on the SOC and sign the bootloader and Opti correctly. And uh, then he may also want to sign his uh, user space and the Linux kernel to ensure that there's no untrusted software running on the SOC. If you're at it, why not uh, do that as well? Um, and then there's also optionally storage rollback protection. You can use the EMMC feature of replay protected memory blocks. Um, which is uh, an area where um, your writes are re uh, replay protected by a counter. Um, Opti implements this as a simple FAT file system. So many MMCs have a replay protected memory block size of like four megabytes, which is enough to store uh, some kind of data or store an encryption key for data as an example. And this is already uh, supported upstream. So you have to enable this uh, replay protected memory block file system. And then you have to deploy this one time during production to write a key or to exchange a key between your processor and your EMMC. And this is a one-time operation. Um, you can't write this key again. This is then uh, kind of fused to your EMMC. Um, and then you uh, run your normal Opti, which does not do the key exchange afterwards. And you ha also have to ensure to disable the emulation in the user space program, which facilitates the communication to user space from the kernel side, because otherwise this provides an emulation layer to um, test this in a development environment. But for production devices, obviously, you want to disable this. So in conclusion, there's no platform which is totally secure at the moment in upstream Opti. Um, I'm slowly getting IMX6 to a state where I can say if you enable the correct switches and uh, ensure that you use a high assurance boot, your Opti should be secure enough. And uh, vendor implementations may include the necessary bits. So because Opti 
is uh, BSD two clause licensed. Um, downstream vendors do not necessarily have to uh, open source their implementations. But sometimes you can bug them, or sometimes they release them as well, and then you can look at their implementations. But you still have to review all the code they implemented and get the reference manual and then uh, cross-reference between the implementation and what the reference manual says. And even then, you have to sometimes test whether their implementation works correctly. So in the end, you have to get a real hardware platform. You have to do all the uh, different stuff and then actually test whether your memory accesses are now protected or whether your DMA masters can now really not access the secure world memory. So it requires a lot of uh, validation and testing on your side. Um, and then I'll get to the outlook or wish list. So currently um, we have uh, a certain problem in that clock accesses and coordination between Opti and Linux is kind of hard. Um, I told you before that this cryptographics acceleration and assurance module is now supported with an Opti, um, but um, the kernel may disable the clocks for your cryptographics module because uh, the kernel is managing the clocks on the system. And uh, if you try to access the crypto module in Opti because your TA wants to encrypt some kind of data, your platform is just going to get stuck because there's a transaction on the bus, but nobody is handling it. So you effectively have a denial of service attack there. And uh, I would like some kind of uh, fix or some kind of framework for this. There's uh, some work ongoing, but I think it's, uh, it targets more uh, ARM 64-bit platforms. But I'll have to look into this again. And I also, I also would like deeper device tree integration for Opti. So currently, it's a lot of platform device definitions within Opti. And there's not much parsing of device tree information going on. Uh, the device tree is basically just used to insert some properties for Linux to parse. So Linux knows that uh, Opti is available. But uh, uh, stuff like memory sizes or available peripherals can all be passed from the device tree. And Opti already includes the uh, possibility to include a device tree within Opti itself. So in theory, you could do all the probing of devices from the device tree as it's done within Linux at the moment. And uh, I would also like some more CI infrastructure to test each commit to Opti master for IMX6 because uh, on the way here, I tried to test uh, the latest release, which was like a week ago. But unfortunately, there was a last minute fix going in and my platform doesn't boot at the moment at the, on the latest release. So evidently, we need some kind of CI there and uh, I need to allocate some time to get platforms up and running to ensure that uh, the platforms aren't get, uh, don't get broken again. Yeah, so that's the talk. And uh, now I'd like to answer your questions. Yes, please. Yes, so for um, IMX6 platforms, there's only this DDR firewall, but I know that STM platforms have a very, um, uh, have a more advanced uh, method of assigning peripherals to the secure or normal world or the small Cortex coprocessor. And uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, but there, I think there's a framework uh, being talked about on how to coordinate this. Yes, please. Yes. And um, I was wondering when configuration time is. Is this basically build time for, for Opti or? Yes, this is so. So all the configuration needs to be done at build time. And in the case of uh, this replay protected memory blocks uh, thing, uh, thing, you uh, also need two Opti binaries. So you need one Opti binary, which is basically configured the same as the other one, but includes this uh, write key provisioning. So it actually exchanges the key between the CPU and the EMMC for manufacturing use. So during manufacturing, you would write the key and then afterwards deploy your normal Opti, which no longer does the key exchange, so the key doesn't leak. Yes, Ahmed. Yes. 
I know there's uh, some implementation discussion currently going on for Opti, but I have not uh, looked deeply into, yet, uh, into it yet. Other questions? Yes. Uh, No, I did not yet. Uh, I just got this merged like uh, two days ago or three days ago when I did the talk, and I still have to verify that this uh, that these DMA accesses are now forbidden. Um, I will probably just hack the GPU driver to try uh, and ask DMA request, but you could also do it, probably do it uh, using the UART DMA capabilities. So the SDMA uh, firmware. <coughs> should be able to do DMA transfers there. So I, I will test this, and then I will submit more pull requests to fix this if it doesn't work. So there are devices like PCI Streamer and the kind of devices that you have PCI on, on, your, uh, on your IMX? No, I unfortunately don't have open PCIe ports on the IMX 6 UL. It's too small for that. But that would be a, pop uh, a possibility on uh, bigger platforms, like uh, IMX 6 Quad, which has a PCIe port. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, it's a part of uh, of the SOC, so it's on the system itself. It lives on the on the bus of the CPU. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.